What's up, guys, and welcome back to the Game Show Invitational Grand Finals, best of five, with four Clovers currently being up 2-0. eBattle gave them better odds, but I think not kind of unfair odds to be you. They put up a pretty good fight in the first game. They just couldn't jam it home in the end. I'm Mike Loris, going to be joined by Grandis V for this game two. May be the last game of the best of five series. Super awkward, but... Hey, if you don't have enough, if you don't have what it takes to win it, then you simply don't. What do you think you have to switch up, if anything, to take this game? I think they just need more reliable initiations. Or as soon as the Sand King stopped starting fights for them in game number one, that's really when the game went south. The Queen of Pain still got amazing Sonic waves. Her Sonic waves, on average, hit three, four heroes, which is absolutely insane. But I think a lot of it just comes down to them not being able to control when they were fighting. Their team fight was amazing, game number one, but. As soon as they lost momentum, it was down to a grinding halt. We're going to start this game off with three defensive supports. Winter Wyvern, Earthshaker, and Shadow Doom are going to be picked up. Although, it's not out of the question to see Bembo take the Earthshaker in the offlane. It's a hero that he is fairly partial to. And four Clovers, as a whole, just run that very, very often. Don't really see him getting out of control farm in the offlane, but he gets his levels. He gets a slightly faster Blink Dagger, and sometimes that's really all you need. So Four Clover is going to stick to what they're comfortable with, and hey, they just won game one, and they have a, now a two-game lead. Might as well not get too crazy, just play it slow, play Five it steady, and uh, well, you may find yourself about 3,000 euro richer. For BU, grabbing Winter Wyvern, a decent start, although the early game power of Winter Wyvern kind of limited. It's really in the mid-late game where she truly shines. We'll see what they want to partner up with this hero. No Io, no Undying, Queen of Pain. The Shrak all being banned out. Maybe they want to go for the Gyrocopter again, but after last game, I don't know. Maybe they'll be a little bit hesitant to grab that one. It's a Clockwork instead, as you were saying. A little bit of an easier way to initiate. Yeah, and it's going to be really nice to have against the Earthshaker, and having the Clockwork on the Dire side is always very useful. One of the best offliners to throw into the Dire offlane, uh, just with the very easy Cogs block onto the creeps. In general, Burden United are going to get two good heroes to start off this draft, but again, it's probably just going to be a similar situation where both of these teams have mirrored lineups. Earthshaker probably to offlane, Clockwork probably the same situation, then defensive support apiece. Alright, so Dyer second ban phase, Shadow Fiends, Bloodseeker, lots of the heroes that have been uh, really just huge powerhouses throughout, well, the recent meta game, but also just uh, this tournament as a whole. So expect to see a little more of this, maybe even just. Uh, Broodmother ban down the line, maybe last pick, last ban rather for BU. Four Clovers, they're going to grab the Gyrocopter as their third pick. Tusk somehow wasn't picked up, which is definitely not something we see all the time. Usually he's just first pick premium materials. We saw in the last game, it had an okay performance, nothing really impressive. But uh, Gyrocopter with a Shadow Demon, man, that hurts. And uh, Shadow Demon for Four Clovers did some serious work in the last game. Yeah, absolutely. In general, just a good hero to have at your disposal. Although, if that is your supporting combo with the Earthshaker and Shadow Demon, it does get a mic defensive and won't be able to very effectively zone out the Clockwork, mm -hmm. unless they can kill him a couple of times, that is, with good Fissure Blocks. But um, even so, Four Clovers still have a solid start to their draft. Do you think we're going to see anything that's going to benefit heavily from the Shadow Demon disruption setup? I think they should be kind of okay with just having it as it is. Dazzle is in the pool. And it may very well be the fourth pick for four clovers. Like the Shadow Demon Gyrocopter combo is fine in and of itself. You don't really need to add that much more to it. Although a heal bomb certainly can't hurt, right? So Dazzle is the fourth pick, putting that Earthshaker on the off lane. Uh, for most other teams, you would say Shaker is a support hero, and you're just going to be okay with that, but not four clovers. Be you, though. Going to go for an Ogre Magi. I love Ogre Magi, dude. I love him. I love him too. It's a fun hero to watch, especially if you roll lucky with those multicasts. And also the style of play that he's conducive to is uh, very entertaining. A lot of map rotations, a lot of early aggression. But will he actually be able to find any clear openings this game? That's really a question mark for me. The Storm Spirit's going to be fairly easy to gank prior to level 6, and that's really the window that Ogre Magi is going to have to hit hard. If they don't, Burton United might fall behind with their supports. So they have a play stun for perhaps Ogre Magi to wander towards the mid lane. They know that the enemy is going to be holding most likely a Storm Spirit mid lane, so you know you could play around that pretty effectively. But as you said, be, uh, Ogre Magi as a whole remaining. typically tends to go towards more of those super aggressive games, super gank Five heavy games. Remaining. Clockwork fits right into that. Winter Wyvern is not exactly going to be ideal for that kind of scenario, but they're lacking the cores right now. They're lacking the heroes to actually do damage from BU's side. 
They have an amplification tool through this uh, Bloodlust. Arises on their team. What do you think about a Magnus? You could Fire Blast into Skewer and pre-level 6. That's going to be an instant kill most of the time on Storm Spirit. Maybe like just steroid up an Anti-Mage, something like that. Go a little bit into the uh, previous patch. Yeah, maybe Anti-Mage, Phantom Assassin, but instead it's going to be a Wind Ranger. Even though it's not going to be the super damage steroid heavy lineup, it's still going to be a hero that offers a lot of DPS. Um, especially if we see like the Agnum Scepter in a Daedalus build or something along those lines. Maybe an Orchid thrown in there somewhere if they feel that they're not going to be able to lock down the Storm. But more than anything, this is a good hero to throw mid against the Storm Spirit himself. Does very nicely in lane with a large range advantage, small damage advantage, and just being able to nuke out the wave at an even rate. And if she gets disrupted off of like a Smoke Shadow Demon or something like that, or hit with a Vizier, she doesn't really have much uh, trouble getting out of that. Just Wind Run and Storm Spirit Radiant can't really do anything hit. outside of that. We got a Broodmother being picked up Dirty last four Clovers hit. because BU did not ban it out as the last pick. Instead, banning out the Dazzle that I was mentioning before. Can't really blame him for that, but now they're up against the Broodmother and their AoE count rather slim. Ogre Magi has Ignite, but that's not good versus Broodmother. Wind Ranger is a power shot that will kill off some Spiderlings. I think maybe the... Uh, tiny ones but not really the big ones so yeah it's gonna be potentially a little bit difficult for BU to actually lock down this brood they do have you know fire blast they have cogs very good tools to actually kill off the brood mother if you can connect with it but that's potentially a lot to ask for it's looking like it will just be an earthshaker support after all but with the shadow demon gyrocopter they have so much kill potential that shaker will be able to pull quite a bit and honestly won't really be needed that much in lane I don't think yeah, the fact that Bamboo plays are shaking in the offlane so much is the only reason why we see Broodmother available here for four clovers. Usually it is fifth band out. Winter Wyvern and Splinter Blast is probably the best tool they have to deal with Broodmother, for, but for that to become relevant, they need levels on their Winter Wyvern, and that's not necessarily something you're going to be seeing for quite some time. And oh, Sven coming out from Burden United. Alrighty then. There's going to be a very aggressive undertone coming out from Burden United's draft in general. Although Sven can just super heavy farm it up, the big benefit here is that he's going to offer Cleave, one of the few melee heroes that can deal with Broodmother's spiders. And then he needs a little bit of help from his allies if he's actually going to get away with that. But uh, usually Sven without Io, I think, is a little bit underwhelming. Bloodlust is like Prepare a pseudo replacement, battle. is not quite as good as the Io, but it could get the job done. And as you said, if Come With Me gets a couple of swings with or without God Strength on a Broodmother with her Spiderling army, then suddenly Sven finds himself 100, 200 gold richer, and then the farm Sven becomes a really dangerous hero, but we'll see if the Sven can actually get off the ground, because for four Clovers, they're sending three heroes up in the top lane and their Broodmother down towards bottom. It's going to be Wee on the Gyrocopter Bank score, playing the Shadow Demon once again. EGM is on his Shaker. Got Waga on the Storm Spirit and Bambo, as I said, Broodmother on the bottom lane. And for Burden United, Mind Control is going to be taking the clockwork down towards bot. Mid lane, Windrunner going to be handled by Arise. And the safe lane, Tri lane, it's going to be coming with B playing on the Sven, supported by Ogre Magi by My Nuts, and Winter Wyvern by Bignum. <laughs> Very oh, funny, geez. My Nuts. Don't even joke about that. I've been burned before by you guys. I don't want to be burned again. But this is not the ideal scenario for a Sven. This is not the ideal scenario for a Winter Wyvern. As I said before, this is a very dangerous tri-lane, or dangerous combo of heroes, Shadow Demon Shaker and Gyrocopter, and Sven, I mean, he's fairly durable as far as uh, core heroes are concerned, but uh, the Warcry, not really gonna help a ton when the majority of the damage is gonna be coming out from Rocket Barrage. And the yeah, other allies that he has, yeah, Ogre Magi is super tanky as well. He's gonna be Stupendous. the X-Factor in this lane, but Winter Wyvern, she does not want to be going up against this combo. She has really nothing to combat against this, for, well, forever, really. She never really does get good against this lane. No, definitely not. And as a combination, the Shadow Demon Winter Wyvern aren't that great at killing off the Gyro. If four Clovers get an early advantage, they might even be able to rotate off the Earthshaker and still be pretty safe in this lane. The Ogre Magi at the moment is going to be sitting in mid Minots, is going to go for Ignite level 1 and potentially get a rotation onto Waga. Waga's going to tank the Creep Wave, throws the Ignite. Will they actually go for this Tower Dive? Probably not, but at the very least it's some amount of pressure there applied. I don't think so. Uh, Ignite level 1 is the way you want to go, but up towards the top, come with me. He's going to get his War Cry out and he will get enough movement speed to get out of that, albeit barely, but... And it's just a couple of spells being thrown, and Sven really banged up and worse for wear. 
Uh, Ignite, again, on the Ogre Magi note, is the build you want to go. Unfortunately, no boots first means that even though he does get the Ignite, he won't actually be able to stick on his targets. Ignite does do more damage than Fire Blast. We might be seeing that up against Vangscore. No, not quite. No one to really back him up, and he knows that if he gets caught out with a Rocket Barrage incoming, then he can very easily die as well. But Minuts, he can get into a man fight right now. Ogre has a broken amount of HP and armor, and a lot of base regen, so Minuts is okay with poking and prodding. Ogre is the hero to do that with. Yeah, absolutely. Another big benefit in this lane is that whenever Winter Wyvern does have the Arctic Burn available, if she can just get one shot off on a, each of these heroes, that can do a lot of damage. As we've already seen, it forced out three tangos. My goodness, Gyrocopter would be great if you'd stop spamming that taunt, but um, we seems to be very happy about something. And maybe it's because they could go on my nuts. He's going to eat through one tree, but still cut off. He's going to eat a little bit of flat cannon damage, but that's about it. Well, we'll see if this combo actually ever does connect again. Shaker does have two additional clarities outside of the one that he's currently drinking, so they can continuously spam those combos out. Again, getting a kill on to come with me, getting a kill on to my nuts, a little bit more difficult, but it will get a lot easier as we gets more points in Rocket Barrage. Take a quick look at the mid lane right now. Wind Ranger has eight denies. We usually don't see this many denies ever, but uh, denying versus the Storm Spirit, it adds up. He's just counting the le down the levels until he gets to that level 6, and it's a lot slower since he's up against a hero with a range advantage, he said in the draft. They have similar base damages, but uh, Wind Ranger is comfortably holding this lane. Yeah, and Arise will continue to do so. Storm Spirit would love to have some sort of intervention to help him out inside this lane, but Vanscore and EGM can't really leave their gyrocopter solo. One of the disadvantages of going for such an aggressive tri lane is going to potentially make your mid suffer, but if they can get this Fen kill, that would be wonderful. They're going to block off Come With Me, but the Rock Barrage damage is mostly absorbed and sets EGM to drop low, and that's going to be first blood drawn by Minots, and Come With Me even gets to survive. With having a salve, they can potentially look for a turn, although Minots is going to eat a face full of Rock Barrage damage. He might still be able to live with a Fire Blast. We can't go for any more. Storm Hammer under the tower will be thrown towards Fan Scores. Come With Me not just another kill for the team, but but now isolated under tower, Fisher blocked off, come with me, is going to go down one way or another, killed off by the Earthshaker. That's so weird that Four Clover decided that that was the time to actually go for it. That Rocket Barrage was still level 1, and though it did do a lot of damage to the Sven, the amount of damage that BU can apply to an Earthshaker with the Ignite with the Winter Wyvern Burn is just so much greater. Now we has level 2 Rocket Barrage, so now if they want to make that type of aggressive play, I would say, yeah, go ahead. You can probably pretty much insta-kill a hero should you land a Fissure and a Rocket Barrage, but now he's going to get hit with the Storm Hammer. There's the War Cry. It's not going to connect to this Ignite Fire Blast combo, though, because of the disengaged Fissure from EGM, which is kind of nice, but BU... Get a couple of kills up on this top lane. The kill potential for four clovers is going to keep increasing with this gyrocopter, but if they put themselves into voluntarily bad positions like we saw the Earthshaker just to get that block off, then yeah, it's going to be really, really costly. Down towards bottom lane, it's a lane that we haven't actually touched much at all. It's Clockwork versus Broodmother, a slightly Broodmother favored matchup, but Clock is still getting good experience. And an interesting item pickup for him, he goes for a poor man's shield. There's a couple reasons why I really like this. Oh, up towards top, there's going to be a Disruption Curse on it. Come with me. Another Fissure is going to buy him a little bit of space, but is it enough? Come with me is going to just walk this one off, huh? Very interesting. Oh, he's buying going for circles. Ogre. And they'll get... around from the side. Yeah. Come with me, he's still fine, dude. He has seven stake charges. He's not dying now, and Minots might actually get this kill onto EGM, but oh no, Waga has a haste rune. That's cheating. You can't bring in help like that. He's going to be just fine, though. This man has five armor. Minots has seven armor. They're just not dying now. Here comes the Storm Hammer with Mind Control coming in as well. He gets disrupted. Waga is going to put a static ramp right on top of Mind Control right now. They have the Arctic Burn active, puts the cogs up. I don't think anyone's going to die here. Yeah, it looks like it's just an awkward standoff, and since they did pull off so many rotations, both of the teams are going to be pretty happy with how these lanes are going down, especially Bambo. The Broodmother now has free access to the Tier 1. That's exactly what you want to be having happen as a Broodmother that has so many spiders up and running. Um, a little bit side note on the Poor Man Shield on the Clockwork, it does increase the amount of damage block that you get, which significantly decreases Broodmother's DPS against you. And also, it's just a very cost-efficient item. He's going to bump into Wagamama. Wagamama without level 6, a level 4 storm. This could very easily be a kill for them, and he's going to end up going down. Disconnect from the Sven, and we're paused again. They had vision of that, Four Clovers? Like, didn't this Observer Ward see the Clockwork there? Maybe it was just yeah. like a little bit too late, he thought that he was faster, but Storm does not actually have boots yet, which is a little bit odd. Uh, obviously, the bottle is objective number one. He actually doesn't have that much CS compared to Arise, who's, uh, again, comfortably outlaying the Storm. In fact, this tower took an absolute beating since Storm Spirit did leave the lane. I guess, you know, you get even trades. Sexy Bambo is also laying in the damage into the bottom tier one, but 
Storm Spirit is a lot further behind than he really should be right now. And with no Storm Spirit, four Clovers therefore have a much weaker Broodmother since, well, Broodmother needs the other four heroes on her team to be, you know, at full fighting capacity if she's going to be effective in this game. So this could be a really big problem. The fact that Arise got this far ahead in this matchup is really bad. I mean, Arise should be getting a slight lead on the Storm Spirit, but not doubling his CS and not with 15 denies. That's just crazy. Yeah, and he almost has a three level advantage over the Storm. That's just not something you see... Ever, I want to say. This is a Storm Spirit that's getting trounced. I mean, it is, like, kind of balanced since, again, Broodmother's having such a great time in bottom. The fact mm. that Mind Control teleported up towards top, it probably stopped four Clover's advance, but this Clockwork also doesn't have a hook shot. The kill certainly helping, uh, on the Storm Spirit, helping his case towards level 6, but, yeah, Mind Control, not yet at that level 6 mark, so he's, you know, kind of in a similar situation as the Storm Spirit, except for the fact that BU need their Clockwork a lot less than four Clover need their Storm. Yeah, definitely. So the Storm Spirit really is the only hero that can set things up, and it's very problematic. I think Burn United are sitting on a decent early game advantage, even though the Sven is also suffering on a similar note. Um, only sitting on boots, hardly any farm to his name. Six last hits here, five minutes in. It's trialing for four Clovers, not exactly getting a ton of kills right now, and only in fact, well, did it get one? It did get one, I think, but... Uh, they're preventing the Sven from farming, and really, for an offensive tri lane, if you could do either kill off the enemy cores, or heroes in general, or prevent the core from farming, check off either one of those boxes and you can call that lane a success. So I think for four clovers, they should be feeling pretty good about how this top lane is going. The Showercopter is getting a lot of farm, so a lot of pressure is being put onto Wii to perform in this game, simply because Waga is having such a tough time on Storm. And if they get a couple more kills with soon-to-be level 3 Rocket Barrage, that can be a very feasible thing to see. Uh, especially since Shaker is level 2 Fissure, Vang score, he's getting, well, he has the curse now, so that's going to up the damage of Rocket Barrage by an insane amount. They can get a couple more kills in this top lane and kind of mitigate the fact that Storm Spirit is kind of getting crapped on. And Storm, as far as heroes to be behind, does have reasonable flash farming potential and can benefit from stacks. So there are avenues that he can come back to this game, but since the supports are in top, there aren't any stacks previously prepared. And it doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. As you said, like a long time ago, Shaker and Shadow Demon can't afford to leave this Gyrocopter alone. With an Ogre Magi and a Sven, just the 1-2 stun combo does so much damage to the Gyrocopter with just the spells alone. Not to mention the right clicks following that. It's tough for Wii to stay on this top lane alone. So Broodmother, she is on her own. Storm Spirit, he is on his own. And that's not a good place for Storm to be. But uh, hopefully we can get this game resumed eventually. What is this? Seven pauses in two in games? This, yeah, in the series as a whole. It's not pretty, to say the least. Honestly, we're probably going to be above ten for all of the games. Well, you have a three kill or two kill lead, but still not with a huge gold lead to their name. In fact, it's a thousand in favor of four clovers. Slight experience for BU, but that's almost completely irrelevant. I personally hope that BU can bring it back, man. Like, I don't care who wins this best of five, but I do want to see more than two games. That's just, like, Absolutely. sad. And if they are going to pull this game through, I think a lot of it comes down to Arise's play in the Wind Ranger. And game number one is Queen of Pain was very good. His advantage did propel them in a lot of their fights. So, um, well, just hey, have to see if he's up to the task. He's the hero play. that's definitely doing the best compared Dyer's to their counterpart. Tower. He's also a, just a player that can step up and do some crazy things, as we have seen in the last game. So, yeah, a lot of pressure on this Wind Ranger, especially with Come With Me having such a tough time up on the top lane. Speaking of Come With Me's tough time, he's going to get hit with the Fissure. Rocket Barrage doing a little bit of damage to him as he does pass through that Fissure. But he has Dyer's no one supporting him right now. Fall. He's not going to get help from the Wyvern, Radiant's not from the Ogre Magi, and well, he's not going to get any farm because of it. He's getting experience, but a Sven with a lot of experience isn't exactly something to fear. I'd rather have... A really farmed gold Sven than an experienced Sven any day of the week. Yeah, and if you look at how he's distributing his skill points, although this is a pretty standard Sven build, the scaling on Stormhammer as well as Warcry isn't that great, unless you have like a blink dagger to really get the best use out of your stun. But oh, in mid lane, Wagamama still no level 6. It looks like he's going to go down again. He's just going to get the run down from Arise and Minots with no support backup. Wagamama is going to lose his life, although potentially Minots will die to the tower. He can buy blocked a little bit by the Wind Ranger. It will cost Ogre his life. 
Right. It's making Storm a little bit of gold, but uh, I'd rather have a Storm Spirit with experience than a Storm Spirit with gold. Arise. He's going to get Fissure blocked out. He has Phase Boots, but they're going to cool down for three seconds. He has nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. He'll try to phase through all of them, but Bambo is there. Surprise spiders out of nowhere. Wind Ranger will also die for that dive. You can't really blame BU for going for that since Storm Spirit has said he's not level 6 yet, so if you keep him off the lane, you could deny that problem for even longer. Plus, he didn't even have boots, so he was only moving at 222 movement speed compared to like the 300 something, almost 400 of Ogre Magi. So it's a pretty deep dive to go for, but uh, Wagamama is going to still be in a rough spot right now, but at least four clovers get those kills in response. And keeping a rise down, as I said before, super important for four clovers to try to do. Yeah, and although this is nice to keep the storm spirit down, it's going to give the broodmother a lot of space. Now completing her hand of minus at seven minutes in the game, gonna fly that out to herself after going for a soul ring. This is a great amount of farm. Mid lane, however, van score. Potentially live trouble. The fire blast is going to connect and rise with the focus fire. It's going to kill off that shadow demon in no time flat. It's going to be yet another kill for rise. Even though that dive went sour earlier, the wind ranger is still in a good situation this game. She has the staff of wizardry up right now, which should most of the time be turned into a four staff for her. So look for a little bit more in the way of shackle shots connecting with my nuts being there with the ignite with fire blast. A lot easier to see. We might get jumped right now. The fire blast actually goes towards the shaker instead, trying to deny that fissure. Although it does come out eventually, we is up against four heroes. He'll pop to the storm hammer of come with me, and my control is going to land the first hook shot of his game. It's a nice kill on this gyrocopter for sure, but they're up against a Broodmother, and BU don't really seem to be getting enough to counteract the fact that this Broodmother is going to be, well, Broodmother. She's pushing down this tower very quickly, and no one from BU can comfortably clear this out. They have level 4 Power Shot, they have level 2 Splinter Blast, and actually no Power Shot in the mid lane. Earthshaker can take a little bit of damage with Bank Score there. Are they really going to think about turning this around? There's no Echo Slam, so that's not really a huge threat. In fact, Arise might get a turnaround here as Mind Control is also coming in. Bank Score on the run. Shackle not going to connect, but it will slow him down for Mind Control to maybe get in range with the Battery Assault. It's going to be close, and he will get one tick, but with a Fissure there, he will not get the kill. But the Power Shot through will get the kill on the Shadow Demon. And my control back off afterwards, but still, Bambo is kind of a problem right now that BU are ignoring. Tier 2 tower in bottom lane is going to fall, and from here on out, switch the Broodmother to top lane. Gyrocopter can pretty comfortably farm bottom, and even up top lane, he's still doing fine for himself. Come with me, he's going to eat a full duration of Braga Barrage, and even though he drops the Storm Hammer, doesn't seem to matter. This Broodmother is a menace, and if she can control the entire enemy woods, there's no real comeback mechanism for Burn United Sven in particular. He's going to need more levels before he can even think about farming stacks effectively, but this is really scary. The Broodmother's at the top of the net worth chart, and that's where she's going to be staying. Arise isn't that far behind, but Arise will struggle to get kills in this Broodmother. He's going to go for an Aghanim Scepter instead of that 4 staff, so going for a little bit more of a direct damage type build, but uh, again, he's the only one on B who's actually doing very well. Like, the Mind Control Clockwork play has been okay, just it's hard to compare what he's been doing with what the Broodmother has been doing. He's three levels behind his uh, one versus one opposition, and Broodmother with Hand of Midas is going to get a ton of acceleration down the line. I don't know what build you go for as the Broodmother in this game, but honestly, I don't really think it matters. He has such an advantage right now, Bambo, and he has a very clear lane to push and pressure that he could go for a Dagon build just to make sure that no out, no enemies go into this lane, or he could go for even a Necrobook in this game. Usually I don't like it at all, a Necrobook on Broodmother, but he could probably get away with it this game. Yeah, when you're this far ahead. I personally really like the Dagon build when the Sven is so far away from a BKB, and when you have the Winter Wyvern on the enemy side, the Cold Embrace could deny you a couple of kills, but with Dagon, you don't really care as the Broodmother. They are going to start rotating the Spider up into this top lane. This is not something, come with me, can deal with at all, I want to say. This is a Sven with Treads Bottle. These are nice items to have, but when you compare it to Broodmother, it's just not enough. Mid lane, EGM cut out by the clock. We're going to be a fairly easy kill for Burden United. Earthshaker can do nothing about it. He just didn't expect there to be an Observe Ward just in range, so he was spotted, and... Earthshaker versus Clockwork, already not really a great matchup there. Over towards bottom, however, Arise, you get wrapped around upon. He has a double damage rune ball in from Wagmama, laying down a remnant. The call down is there as well. Arise, wind run though. He's gonna get a little bit of distance out with the bottling there, but Waga has enough mana for another jump. They will take down the Wind Ranger. That's a big kill for the four clover side. Again, getting rid of the problem, and in the meantime, Minus is getting chased down. Is this gonna be a solo kill for Bambo? No, the Stormhammer is gonna be forced out. Just to keep the Ogre Magi alive, but Bambo is still alive and kicking up on this top lane with his level 4 webs. He's regening a hell of a lot. 
It's a 1v3 right now, and Bambo's winning, and we on the bottom lane is pushing that one out, starting his Broodmother routine as well. Uh, this is not looking good at all for BU. Like, the past couple minutes have been pretty disastrous, and, oh man, the dust misses as well. Blind Cogs, Bambo is just laughing his ass off right now. And he's going to spawn spiders minus up that harpy and sexy bamboos in the trees comfortably where nobody oh. can really find them. Do they have a way to chew through these? Oh, nice. They're going to get this much needed kill um, with the sentry ward placed down the small camp. It's going to block that, but a small price to pay for the broodmother bounty. It was pretty greedy of him to even go for that injection. Like, having the spiderlings is nice, but you know that the enemies are all around you. You probably would be better off just uh, Midasing something, like maybe in the hard camp, and then just booking it. So, yeah, Broodmother getting a little bit too comfortable in that lane, but hey, you know what? It's her first death. That's fine. Usually Broodmothers die a couple more times over the course of a game. Uh, the bottom lane, Arise, finally farming that one up effectively. Mind Control getting a little bit of space towards mid. If you can keep getting kills like that, the Sven just needs a little bit more time to get those points in Great Cleave, then stacks become a viable option for the Sven, but I don't know, four Clovers, they're just pretty much firing off on all cylinders, and again, they're farming a lot faster on more heroes than BU. Yeah, and even the Storm Spirit, after such a terrible early game, Wagamama has come back pretty nicely into this game, only about 1,200 gold behind where the... Wind Ranger is, although that's unfortunate for the Storm Spirit, and he'd like to be in a better spot. If you take a look at him five minutes ago, this is very good. Arise and Mind Control, they have a hook shot, and they're looking to go towards the bottom lane. They'll be running into a 2v3 and come with me up towards top. Yeah, with the Fissure, he's going to pop the War Cry, getting a lot of armor, will straight TP out. Mind Control, it's a trap, there's two heroes there, he's going to get hit with the Demonic Purge. And he's slow to a crawl, but there's no real follow-up for this one. The Cog's giving him a nice barrier with which to walk away from. Big ball in the game from Wagmama, though. Does he really want to go for this? Doesn't have a ton of mana. He has a bottle. He's not drinking from it just yet. Gets the Vortex from a super long range. Now the call down is guaranteed to land. One missile will explode the clockwork, and we draws the kill. I did not think that that was actually going to work out, but it did. And while that's happening in the meantime, Bambo is doing Bambo broodmother things up towards top. Finds Bignum in the trees. But with EGM there, he's going to decide not to go for it. That's actually pretty curious. The Splinter Blast is really good at dealing with these spiders. Even at level 3, it kills off the small ones, and then a second Splinter Blast will subsequently kill off the next wave of spiders, if thrown instantly with a little bit of help. So uh, that is going to slow down this push in top lane, but uh, regardless, this is still just fine for... Um, for Clover's side. I think what happened there is that Bambo was hiding inside the trees and then gets hit invis with the Splinter Blast. Regeneration. Yeah, Splinter Blast uh, doesn't care about invis or even smoke. It'll hit you there, so very weird skill because that makes sense, Dota. We have a pretty deep movement here from BU in the enemy jungle. Ogre Magi and Clockwork, two very tanky heroes. They put out a lot of damage, but not going to find their proper targets. They have three heroes in mid lane, two heroes on top. Again, for BU, there's been no one on this bottom lane, at least for a substantial amount of time. Like, that's a lot of gold that's being freely farmed up by this gyrocopter, who had already a really good start. He has now the Helm of the Dominator, a thousand gold in the bank, and no one really to worry about. So, four Clovers, they might even just want to slow this game down and start transitioning this gyrocopter into a little bit more of a heavy hitter, simply because they can. Yeah, take a look at the net worth chart. It's being dominated by four Clover's heroes. Uh, top, or three out of the top four are currently sitting on their side, and the Sven can't really fight effectively, although he's going to try to with the God Strength over on a Bambo, but with an Echo Slam, he can't even get that kill. There is going to be a cold embrace, but he dies because of the damage coming out from Waga. They'll go forward for Bignum, slowing him down with a couple of those procs of the Storm Spirit passive, but now Mind Control is isolated, blocked off nicely by the Earthshaker, and that will be the death of Clockwork, or will it? One auto attack from Waga is going to secure a double kill. Now Bambo is back and up and running with his ultimate life stealing off of my nuts. It's three kills for the four Clover's side. BU just one by one by one throwing themselves into this meat grinder. They throw a power shot which does connect onto the shaker but Arise can't follow up on this one. That's obviously like the worst way to take a fight just putting this putting your Sven out to dry which is bad but then Clockwork somehow decides to put himself in a corner which is also not a good idea. Then Ogre decides it's a good idea to help out. Like, that just went from bad to worse to even worse from BU because I guess they just didn't respect the fact that four clovers would be willing to help out this broodmother that much. Like, some teams may just leave this broodmother out to dry and you know, try to split push mid or something while that's happening, but four clovers obviously are willing to help out this brood and brood with all that help caught BU kind of by surprise. It's even with the Winter's Curse being used, even with God's Strength being used, and they got nothing done. That was incredibly greedy from BU, and it 
ultimately ended up biting them in the ass. Maybe if Arise was there in lane by the time that started, they could have gotten away with it, but he was nowhere close. Winter Wyvern is going to get quite a lot of gold from these Spiderlings as soon as she comes in, so that's nice, I suppose. But we're on pause number eight, um, as we'll just, I suppose, take a look at how these heroes are doing. We're getting very close to the Windranger's Aghanim Scepter. It's a big leap in power for Burden United, and something that they honestly need. It's really nice for Arise, but uh, since he has gotten all this farm, he has slowed down his ability to actually impact the game, simply because he hasn't had allies near him, he hasn't had any opportunities for good fights. All the fights have been away from where he is. So this Aghanim Scepter, though it is very nice, may run into a situation where he has it, he pops it on any hero, and then he gets fissured and killed off instantly. Like, this Wind Ranger really needs to be doing, I feel like, a little bit more for BU. It's hard to say that because Arise is already doing so much for his team, but no one else in BU is having a good time at all. And Arise is the only one who's actually getting any sort of substantial farm. Yeah, all right. Hmm. I think we've pretty much gone over the current state of the game. Four Clovers are getting a lot of farm on a lot of different heroes that can actually fight, whereas that's not the case for Burden United. Um, let's see. With Clockwork Hookshot available, they'd want to be going for pickups, but is there really a clear opening? Who can they kill? Uh, Shaker. <laughs> Shaker if he's in the mid lane and randomly out of position, but EGM and Vangscore both have been pretty diligent about not being in terrible positions. Which, for a support hero, it's a good skill to have, but uh, I'm a little bit interested in to seeing what this uh, double Orchid build is going to look like. Storm Spirit going for his, as is Broodmother. Uh, we do see Storm Spirits nowadays, or quite often, skip the Orchid completely and just go for a Bloodstone. I don't know if that's necessarily the great, greatest item this game, but double Silence up against to be used squad. It's kind of nice, but that's a pretty deep investment. It's really good for being able to focus on the Wyvern before she's able to get off any of her spells, and in that sense, it's probably going to work out for them. I'm okay with them going for double Orchid, mostly because the Broodmother and Storm probably aren't going to be together inside the fight, so you're at least going to want one on the Storm. If anything, I'd say replace the Orchid on the Broodmother with something else. Does Orchid, if you double cast it on someone, does it apply two separate oh. instances? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure it just refreshes the instance. Damn. That would be insane. You just get double amplification blasts. One amplifies the other. OP. Mass Orchid, new meta. Move over, <laughs> Mass Necrobook. This is the new item to mass. Clearly, so what you do is you have five orchids, Alina and a lion on your team. You put five orchids on somebody and then just Laguna Blade Finger. Or or you get like Veil or Ghost Scepter. <laughs> we we <laughs> used to know. do that. It's like. What? Uh, back when. Heroes of New Earth used to be a thing, like when it was just released, they had all these other heroes with just like point click ridiculous damage. You would get like a whole five man team of them, and then you could insta gib like half of the enemy team. It was great. Unfortunately, now the game That's is hilarious. fucking trash, but you know, good times in the past. We're back into this game now, so uh, back to the world of Dota 2 as Sexy Vambo continues his, I don't know, reign of terror up in this top lane. The Broodmother is so hard to dislodge. Burton United would probably have to commit four if not five of their heroes to actually force him out of the lane and that's sign that the storm spirits farming and the gyro is farming it kind of feels like this game is a game of whack-a-mole for burden united they might be able to keep one of these heroes down but not all three arise with an aghanim scepter and dust can be that hammer that they need to whack that mole like if you land a shackle shot on the broodmother and you have vision and you have focus fire bambo is just dead like it's still bottom line a hero with less than a thousand hp no strength items to her name her survivability comes from her elusiveness and you could if you can get a beat on her she will just go down so it's not impossible to see that happening from the bu side it will be impossible if they ignore her and go instead for the bottom lane my control with a blind hook shot not going to connect saw we there previously but we is now very comfortably farming ancients while this tower is being destroyed it's nice for BU to get a tower and everything, but they may lose a tower up on top lane, plus a Winter Wyvern, who's going to try to take flight, but Broodmother is going to stick on this Wyvern, like white on rice, and Bingham is going to fall to the Broodmother, and they'll get a tower, so it's nice for BU to get a tower, but they lose a little bit more while they do that. Yeah, absolutely, and this 4 stack of Ancients for Wii is absolutely huge. He's going to have to wait for another Flak Cannon before he can finish it off, but the amount of gold he's going to get is absolutely ridiculous. Mmm... Yeah, it's overall a good map trade for four Clovers, and 
coming back to this top lane is almost impossible. Now that Broodmother takes down that tier 1, her control over the enemy wood starts to increase rapidly. They'll spot out Wii, and maybe they can get this kill. Wii is so low, a power shot snipe would be absolutely Dyer's sick, but he's going to solve up and be at a comfortable amount of HP, or at least survivable amount of HP. He's already made 700 gold from the stack, and it's Radiant's not even done yet, so it, like, even if he gets picked off right now, he made a net game. So it's going to be nice for Bu, but not good enough. Oh, come with me. Teleports right into a whole swarm of spiderlings. He's going to get orchid, but he will have enough tankiness just to back off, and he does have the rest of his team coming in. Huge splinter blast to wipe out all of the creeps, and they do catch a blind hook shot onto EGM. This is a very dead shaker. Broodmother can do nothing to help. Bu get a lot of net worth off of that one kill, mostly because all the spiderlings were involved as well. That is something you have to be careful of as a Broodmother. You get really comfortable with your spiderlings, but at a certain point, these spiderlings are more a hindrance than an actual asset, since BU can just Splinter Blast, cleave through one hit, and suddenly that's, what, an extra 150, 200 gold for the enemy side? Yeah, it's really nice for them to be able to have heroes that can deal with these um, spiders from Bambo. He's still doing quite a good job in demanding the attention of those heroes, but um, yeah, Burn United do find a small victory in top lane. And Bambo might be running into Bignum right now. There's an Embrace here, but you can't cast Embrace if you're silenced. With the ultimate there, Bignum should just pop, and he will. Being injected by Spiderling doesn't sound like a great way to go. Sven also is in the area, has a lot of extra armor because of his war cry. There's no Orchid either, so he's going to get a Stormhammer onto half the Spiderlings. EGM, though, still has a Fissure, looking for an angle which will connect and come with me. Not completely block him, but Bambo has more than enough damage to get that kill as well. It's a double for Bambo. And, uh, well, for BU, the name of the game is don't get picked off alone here. Here comes two more heroes, but that's a really bad idea, I think. They're going to charge forward, but Mind Control silence. Fissure onto two with the bubble onto the Ogre Magi. He's going to be a non-factor. Mind Control down. Now Minus completely trapped. There are so many units here. Bank score on the sidelines. Going to get shackled and brought down by Arise, but Arise has no more backup here. Bambo's going to get an Ultra. He wants to get a Rampage, but I don't think that's really viable right now. He has another Orchid coming with Bingham coming in. He's going to get silence. Actually, this may very well be a Rampage for Bambo. He's going to grab Bingham in just a couple more hits. That's going to be five. Is it going to be six for this Broodmother? Stop being the Broodmother, guys. EGM is going to picked off by Arise, but it is going to be a double Rampage for Bambo. Oh my god. Broodmother suddenly 9-1-2 with 5,000 gold. And that was just like a 2v5. 2v6. Like, what was that? That was insane is what it was. Sexy Bambo can now buy literally any item in the book. And the item that I'd love to see this game, or probably not, would be an Eye of Scotty. The slow stacks with in-cap fight now, and it's absolutely absurd, but um, no matter what it is, it's going to be a huge ticket item in bottom lane, or rather inside the mid-river area. They'll kill off the Sven another time, and we will even survive zipping forward onto mine. That's a huge victory for Four Clovers. This game came off of the hinges for Burden United in just a matter of minutes. Yeah, before, like, a minute ago, it was looking bad. Now, bad isn't the right word to use because they just fed over six kills to the Broodmother. They fed over and two the kills to three. the Gyrocopter. In a 1 versus 3 scenario, this Gyrocopter was disrespected as far as the amount of damage he could put out. He's level 14. He has level 2 call down. This guy hurts, hits pretty hard. So, uh, yeah, BU, they are just falling apart right now. And, like, we saw what Arise can do. He picked off Vangskor which is nice, I guess, but yeah, you're gonna have to pick up a Broodmother, and if anything else other than that happens, then it's just gonna be a bust. Arise gonna hit with a Fissure, gets put into a bubble, here comes TP from the Wyvern, but it's Bambo arriving with the Orchid, Dagon Blast, Arise should pop from this one, they have a curse on the Bambo, taking no damage from it, Arise is gonna drop, and there are more heroes teleporting in from BU Waga, doesn't have a ton of mana, so they won't jump in just yet, but Man, the map control and the web control and right now from this Broodmother is insane. He can hop between top and mid within a couple of seconds, and BU already struggling to deal with him in one lane, let alone two. Yeah, and with the Orchid plus the Dagon, if you throw a Shadow Demon Amp on top of that, that's almost just a straight-up kill with the Dagon injection of the Spiders. This is a game that's really starting to become unmanageable for Burden United. There's nowhere safe. If you take a look at their map, this line of webs is really the line of where they can stay. They have to be behind that area if they want to be safe. And now look at the Broodmother just spreading out spiderlings as just mini wards. BU, they're, they know pretty much exactly where four, four clovers are, but knowing and being able to act upon it, two very, very distinct and separate things. So this tower, though it is going to be very slowly pushed, it's going to be pushed nonetheless, and BU are going to be forced into a fight. Blind Shackle, not going to connect onto anyone. BU are all here. They do not have a Winter's Curse from the Wyvern. 
and this is gonna be potentially the worst fight that four clovers can take since Bambo is actually stuck in the trees. Mike Troll looking for a hookshot, they get a stun onto Weeb, he tosses BKB, and with his call down now, Preps is gonna land onto Kelpy. Sven's down, Mike Troll's in a terrible position right now, catches Bank score in the cogs, but he doesn't have any help right now. He's gonna drop as well, giving Wee a double kill. Arise with the wind run is gonna get a lot of distance away. No Broodmother involvement really in this fight. They'll take down the Earthshaker with Arise, but now with the missile connecting, he's gonna get healed up a little bit. With the Rocket Barge there, it's gonna be a triple kill for Wee. Now into Minots they go. With the mischance, Minots is gonna drop right now. Wee is gonna claim an ultra kill. Can't quite get the rampage. But 24 to 13, four clovers, Raffle Stomp BU in this game too. The momentum of that game was a little bit ruined by the pauses, but overall, it was a very clean victory for four clovers. All three of their lanes got something. The Storm Spirit did get absolutely demolished by Rise. The individual play in that lane definitely favored the Wind Ranger for the first bit of it, but so much space was made by the Brood and the Gyrocopter both, and at the end of it, Four Clovers really had no chance of losing, it felt. Oh man, that was kind of a disappointing series since Best of Fives should not have two games. They should have three. But either way, it's going to be Four Clovers to take the entire tournament. They're going to be walking home 62-ish hundred euro richer. They have battled their way through Vegas Quadrant, through Moscow Five, through Scary Faces, losing only one game in the playoff stages. So pretty darn convincing display from Four Clovers and pretty convincing display from BU getting up to the stage as well, considering the fact that they disbanded halfway through which is awkward as all hell, but it is going to be four clovers to take first, Burden to take second, Scary Faces to take third, and that is going to mark the end, guys, of the Game Show Invitational. Being supported, of course, by eBattle by the uh, Aces Frog. Whole bunch of thanks to all of those sponsors and whatnot, and it's been a pleasure casting this for you guys. We sincerely hope that you've enjoyed the games, despite the pauses, despite the DDoS, but despite all of those issues. I'm Mike Loris. I've been joined by Grandis V for this final match between Four Clothes and BU. If you enjoyed the casting, be sure to follow us on Twitter at Mike Loris, at Grandis V. Any final words before we shut this down, man? Okay. Seems like that's a no. He hung up already, so fine. No final words, I guess, but it's going to be it, guys. Congratulations to Four Clovers. Congratulations to BU. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all in some other tournament. Later, guys. GG.